Hey guys, welcome back to the Plan Eats YouTube channel. My name is Todd and if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing that. Let's get right into the video today. I have a confession for you guys. I've been talking a lot about diet nutrition lately and the one thing I have to confess to you and some of you already know is that I have a little bit of an addiction, a compulsion to eating lots of peanuts and peanut butter. If you were in my live stream the other night, you will know I sat and I ate the better part of two pounds of Virginia style roasted unsalted peanuts. And I just love peanut butter. I always have, I probably always will. Problem with me is when I eat peanuts and peanut butter, I can't stop. I get addicted to it and I literally cannot stop. So I have in recent days, and if you've watched any of my recent videos, you know that I'm trying to rebalance some of the macros in my diet, trying to get less carbs and a little more um, fat and protein. And sometimes having peanuts and peanut butter at your disposal is a really good option because peanuts and peanut butter are high in fat, relatively high in protein, and relatively lower in carbs. So it is a nice way to rebalance things and feel satisfied from the day. Now, Recently, I watched Jeff Nelson's uh, video on DHA, DHA, and I will link that video down below in the description box. It is longer, so you might not have watched it. It's around an hour, but it's worth watching. He spent a lot of time scooping up really good, relevant information on this topic. And if you are someone who is vegan or vegetarian, or you don't eat fish for that matter, then you probably really wanna watch that. Um, now, the problem, what's the problem? I mean, so what if it's an addiction? It's, it's plant-based, right? What's the problem? Well, the problem is this. Um, when we eat foods, foods all, most foods have fat. And what we're learning is that one of the markers of health in, in veganism and vegetarianism is sort of your omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. So, so the six to three. And from the sources that I've been able to gather, and I've looked at many of them, and I'm not an expert at this, I'm just reporting to you what I've read and heard, is that we should be somewhere between four to one, that was six to three, or one to four. So that's quite a range, and, and you might have your own opinion, and let me know down below in the, in the comment section, I'd love to hear, but a four to one to one to four, okay? So we're sort of in that range as ideal, I don't know, but it doesn't really matter for the purpose of this video because what I'm about to report to you is astronomically outside those boundaries. Now, it's, this is not a problem. This is not a problem um, if you're eating peanuts or peanut butter sparingly. So if you like the occasional peanut or a little bit of peanut butter every few days, just you're not worrying about this. Um, but peanuts, the ratio, now brace yourself for this. I hope you're, you're sitting down. The ratio for six to three is something like 5,000 to one. So there's 5,000 times more omega-6 to omega-3 in peanuts and peanut butter. And I've even seen other numbers, something like 10,000 or 20,000 to one. So peanuts are on the high, high level of um, omega-6 to omega-3. This does get a little worse too because if you like almonds, if you like to eat um, things like sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds, these also have very high omega-6 to omega-3 um, fatty acids in them. So, uh, you know, on their own, they, they look like they might be something that you want to eat in moderation. Now, one thing is that if you eat fish, if you're a fish eater, you're here and you, you eat fish, then that you do get a benefit there because most fish are something like one to five or one to 10. So if you're including fish in your diet, you're getting a pretty healthy source of omega-3 relative to omega-6. The problem is, is that many of us, especially if you're watching this video right now, don't eat fish, or we don't like fish, or we don't have access to fish. That's possible too. So what on earth does a person do? Well, the purpose of this video is not to scare you, okay? Um, I'm just here to inform you and let you know what I'm learning as I go through my journey on my vegan diet. Which, by the way, I've been on for almost seven years now. And just so you know, if you haven't been to this channel, I'm an older vegan. I'm about 50, I'm, I'm not just about, I am 53 years old and I want to take care of my heart. And so that this is all coming from a place of my heart, okay? My heart to you. Now, you have to look at the bigger picture because as a vegan, you probably eat a lot of similar foods to me. You probably eat lots of greens. So 
For me, on, on an almost everyday basis, I eat lots of broccoli, I eat lots of kale, Brussels sprouts. If you've watched my videos, you know this. And these foods are really good for that ratio. They tend to be somewhere no worse than a one to one. So, you, so every time you get a little bit of omega-6, you get a comparable amount of omega-3. I will warn you though a little bit here, not warn you, but inform you that um, greens like beet greens and chard, Swiss chard, those are actually in the other direction. So they're probably greens that you want to incorporate into things like broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts, or maybe just eat them on occasion. Um, if you like beans, beans get a major A plus here. Beans like black beans are one to one. So there's another benefit to eating beans. There's many reasons why you should have beans in your diet. Not a nutritionist, but I'm just telling you what I've learned and the practices that I have in my diet. Squash, if you eat squash, I don't eat squash very often, but if you do, it's a one to two. So you're getting double the omega threes to omega sixes, which is really cool. But the real champions here are the flax seeds and the chia seeds. And for me, I'm not a big fan of flax. I never have. I try to get it in my diet, but I find it tastes fishy. But I do like chia. So these are chia, they're whole white chia seeds from prana. And for me, it's really common for me to come home and just put a mouthful of whole chia seeds and I chew it really long time. I turned it into a puree. You can also use a coffee grinder and grind them up and sprinkle them on various things. But those are amazing because the ratio is one to three or one to four. So you're getting three to four times the amount of omega-3 as you are getting omega-6. Um, omega so why is this important? Well, as I may or may have already said, I can't remember now, um, I'm just rambling here. But the, the trick here is to make sure that you're able to take all the nutrients that you're eating, the fats, and if you're not getting a reliable DHA source, for people who eat fish, you're getting direct DHA. But if you're not eating fish foods, then your body has to convert the ALA, which you're getting from a lot of these plant foods, and it converts it quite effectively into DHA so long as the conditions are good. And one of the conditions, according to what we're hearing from Jeff Nelson's video, recent video, and I've read this and heard this from other places too, is that if your balance, if your omega-6 is really high relative to your three, that inhibits your body's ability to do the conversion. So we really have to be mindful of that. Now you might say, oh, well, let me take a DHA supplement and you probably like me. But as we learn, you know, as the longer we live, the longer we learn. If you take a DHA supplement like me, this is a vegetarian algae source, then you might think, oh, then the problem is solved. Well, you might want to th rethink this because there is no evidence to show that these supplements are effective. In fact, there is some evidence to suggest that they could be harmful. So, uh, you know, it just seems like every supplement that comes on the market, with the exception of B12, you, if you're vegan, you probably need a reliable source of B12 supplementation. Other than that, the rest of them are all really falling by the wayside. And I used to be a huge, I mean, will you admit it too? I used to take, <laughs> I used to have like a cabinet of vitamins. This is way back in the early mid nineties. And I was taking everything under the sun thinking that that was the way to be healthy. We're learning now that that's not the way to do it. Um, so Jeff's done a lot of research. He's put his work in. I recommend that you watch his video. Um, a lot of what he's saying flies in the face of what we're hearing from people like Dr. Joel Furman. Um, also Dr. Michael McGregor, sorry, Dr. Michael Greger. And the two of them, Jeff is sort of suggesting that they could have some sort of ulterior motive. I don't know, who can you, who can you trust nowadays on, on YouTube and in the vegan, even in the doctor vegan community? Um, you do have to do your research. You have to think for yourself. You have to take care of yourself. According to Jeff, he says, eat a very healthy, well-balanced, plant-based whole food diet. I think that's a, uh, that makes sense to me. The second thing is he says, reduce your omega-6s. Try to reduce the oils and peanuts and other seeds and nuts. He is actually, he does say that he eats seeds and nuts in his diet, but he keeps them at a minimum. Um, and also he says, just don't take DHA. There's no evidence to show that it's helpful, it's expensive, and it could be potentially harmful. What are my takeaways from all this? Well, my first is that maybe the peanuts and the peanut butter you want to eat on a more sparing basis and maybe don't buy it all the time especially if you're like me and it just calls to you right um, and you're addicted to it maybe just eat it in small amounts as a treat perhaps um, eat chia seeds and flax seeds every day in some way 
Uh, avoid oils, although I will say this, canola oil is actually not too bad. Canola oil is a two to one. So it's got about 50% um, omega-3 to omega-6. In the land of oils, it's not, it's not that bad. It is a reliable source of omega-3. Um, to reduce the seeds and nuts in your diet, so I really do like um, sunflower seeds and flax seeds for the nutritional levels that they have in them, vitamin E and iron and all that stuff. But maybe just take a little bit and put it on your salads. Just a little bit goes a long way with those, I think. That's going to be my current philosophy. And of course, eat lots and lots of greens. And make those greens centered around broccoli and kale and Brussels sprouts. I've never heard anybody criticize those particular foods. And uh, if you love the chard, Swiss chard, which I do love it, especially in the summer, um, then just eat that a little more sparingly. Beet greens, I used to love beet greens. Uh, I still do. But eat those in a more sort of a moderate amount. Anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think. Are you also peanut butter addicts? Make me feel like I'm not alone here. And, and please admit that in the comment section. I would love to hear that. And uh, let me know what you guys are doing. What are you thinking about all of this? Where do you land? Especially if you're a vegan, you're trying to moderate a diet that's healthy in the long term. Maybe you're older like me, you're in your 50s or 60s, and you are thinking about your health, you're thinking about the long term. Share that with me, share that with other people who watch these videos. That's what it's all about. And if, as I said, if you haven't already started following me today, my socials are down below in the description box. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you all back here in a few days time for another super fresh video.